Hello and welcome to Kicking Tires. My name is Jimmy. And I'm Justin. And today it's September 14th and we got a bunch of news today. A lot of exciting stuff. We got some Toyota news, some Honda news, the most exciting Chevy news you've ever heard in a very long time. Also, just this exciting Chrysler news, but we'll get to all of this. <laughs> I promise we will. First off, though, we got to talk about the GR Corolla. I mean, we talked about GR Corolla already. We actually talked about GR Corolla like a lot, three <laughs> times, four times already. Yeah. Uh, but this is the most important, one of the most important aspects, pricing. So pricing was announced for Canadian as well as the U.S. Um, starts at $37,000 U.S. or $45,500 for Canada. Pricing is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Pricing for an all-wheel drive car, like that's right in line with the Golf R, I guess. Uh, but you're getting yeah, something well, a bit more unique, I would say. Yeah, thing is for Canada, our Golf R prices is just so good so so good um that it actually just kind of it, it hurts <laughs> the corolla really because the golf r is 47.5 mm -hmm. uh, which is cheaper than the mid-grade version of the gr corolla which is the circuit edition uh, mm -hmm. but like only two thousand dollars more than the core which is the base one mm -hmm. chances is you're probably going to get a golf r a lot easier than the Corolla as well. Yeah, just that's just how it is. But performance um, wise, you get fancier differentials even with the core model. Yeah, so which is kind of the for, big news for Canadians. You get that because you know our winters. Let's disregard the American spec. Let's just talk about Canadian spec, <laughs> Canadian spec. Canadian pricing. Right? All right, it, that's what's yeah, relevant. Forty-five five. You know, it's it's a good price. You get good spec, like you said. Like the circuit edition, the only thing I see that is kind of like, oh, I, I could I could kind of use that is a heated steering wheel. I personally like a heated steering wheel, but that's really it. Like the carbon roof, the red brick calipers, the hood bulge, and the spoiler. I I'm, I'm not too crazy about that. I mean, visuals, sure, but like you know, it's not a, it's not anything really that big. Um, so in my opinion, save yourself the eight grand or whatever it is, get yourself the regular model for 45.5. And it's a really good package. Yeah. I mean, the carbon roof is, is really the thing that you can't just bolt on. Yeah. Uh, heated steering wheel really doesn't matter too, too much. I would say uh, it's nice, but I could live without it. But yeah, the carbon <laughs> roof, you can't, can't really do it aftermarket like you can but it would cost more than just getting that one. getting the package yeah yeah so it is special yeah. it, it definitely is special would you would you recommend the morizo edition though for sixty thousand? <sighs> I i mean people will love it because that is the that is the speculative gem right like mm. if if you're someone who only cares about resale value exclusivity you know, making money off of your car, then that is the one to get, right? Like <laughs> the the Marizo is the best, you know. Well, yeah. it's more money, but they take away the back seats. Mm -hmm. So I, I to to me it doesn't make sense. <laughs> like as far as like the spirit of the GR Corolla, right? It's not it's not really a track weapon. Right. right? I I almost doubt that the GR Corolla will be much faster than a GR86. Uh, Actually, throttle, throttle House did a did a track test between the GR Corolla Circuit Edition mm -hmm. and a GR86. The 86 wasn't that like it was slower, yes, but it wasn't that much slower. Yeah. I think it was it's like got less tire and two less or three break. seconds. Yeah, right. it's got less tire and less brake, which really is very easy to fix. Yeah. Uh, but the chassis itself is better inherently just the balance and everything and you could put a lot of tire under a gr86 too so yeah the power it's great and all but uh it's as a track weapon it doesn't make sense and so i think stick with either the core or the circuit i think the core is a way to go for just, the money just, it's, it's just 15 for the money. grand it's 15 yeah. grand difference the marizo is not 15 grand better of a car 
Um, but you get a signed thing, don't you? It's not oh, even no. his real it's name. <laughs> it's Akio Toyota's racing name. Like it's like I'm using my uh, Xbox gamer tag. <laughs> I love tofu. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> it's actually not I love tofu, but oh. okay. I don't yeah, remember what changed. it was. Yeah, that's my rev scene. Oh, Easy. whatever. Same thing, same yeah. thing. But Anyways. okay, wait, wait, wait. It's um, what I'm confused about is the the press release talks about the Marizo having like a retuned engine with a higher 295 Tor- pound feet of torque, but isn't the base also 295? No, it has three. Yeah, it has a bit bit more horsepower. Oh, no. it goes up to yeah. It's 273 oh, and it goes okay. to 295. Horsepower is the same. Hmm. It's just torque. There's probably no difference. Like mechanically, there's probably no difference. It says it's retuned. Yeah. It's probably just software. Yeah, they they probably just limit the regular one. Yeah. <laughs> so they can sell you a better one. Yeah. So the Marizo, like I don't see anything about oil coolers, um, like no enhance anything. Like if they did, they would tell you that it has you know, a blueprinted engine. It has an upgraded oil cooler, but it doesn't, so it's worthless because anyone could software tune a, a core and get the same, if not more power. But I, what I want to see is, is it more durable? Is it going to last more laps? Which it doesn't sound like it will because they would tell you if it would. Yeah. 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 So more of the story. Buy the core. Buy the um, core. Yeah, but you and can't. have more fun with it. But either way, you can't. And <laughs> you can't. So yeah. buy golf R. Yeah, because even this morning we were having this discussion in our one of our track chat, right? Like people were like, you know, I put two deposits down. I'm like your deposit's worthless. Like <laughs> if you're if you're like the typical guy that puts a deposit down, like and then they slap you in the face with a low ball trade in value, and then you're like, nah. You know, if you got too much pride, then you're you're not getting this car. Like, at the end of the day, a dealership is not a charity. Yeah, it's they have only so many cars coming in, and only so many GR Corollas. They're gonna give it to whoever they can make the most money off. That's end of story. There's no. Yeah. I don't know why people are so naive about it, and people are like, you know, I could, you know, I I can put money down on it, like. Nah, you got to, if someone is willing to, to bend over more, they're getting it, <laughs> ultimately. You, you got to have a better trade-in. You got to have yeah. a car that they want easy yeah. for so them my to make tons was, of money on. Buy a Prius Prime now and expect to lose 10K on it <laughs> in the next three months. But you will, at least you're saving money on gas, right? At least you could drive that commute on it. And they would love to have a Prius Prime to resell whatever yeah. Toyota dealer. Uh, RAV4 Prime or RAV4 hybrid pricing is just kind of nuts. But I think a Prius Prime, take a 10K hit on it, get yourself into a GR Corolla. Because the markup on a second-hand market for GR Corolla is going to offset that anyways. Um, I mean, if you do end up selling it, right, it, it yeah. then will offset it. But if you're looking to keep it for... A long term, yeah. you're you're not going to make anything off of it out of it. Yeah, but remember what we said about the GR Corolla and the Focus RS being that lesson is, yeah, they they tried to sell the Focus RS for a lot, a lot of money, and ended up being a bit of a disappointment. And the values are not kind of what they were hyped up to be, yeah. because at the end of the day, if you can outperform this. If the GR86 can run laps around it on a track, people aren't really going to care about this after, you know, the public release, basically. Mm -hmm. Because the way a car reviews really doesn't matter because the court of public opinion is going to set the tone. If they start blowing up on track, if they're slower, if whatever, just a lot of issues, then this car is not going to do well. Uh, and that's, that was the exact opposite with the GR Supra, which does not review well because they put garbage Michelin PSS tires on it and it's aligned terribly out of the box. Uh, and that's a car that initially people were like, 
man, I don't want to spend $65,000 on it. And then now you can't get one. And now people are like, I'm glad to pay 80000 for one if I could get my hands on one. But you can't. I yeah. just realized a manual base GR86 is 31K. Yeah. So for 14000 before you hit the base price of a mm-hmm. GR Corolla. For 14000 you can do a lot to it. The 86 is really fast. I I can't stress this enough. A lot of people ask me, like, hey, do I buy a base Cayman <laughs> or something like that? And I'm like, dude, just get yourself a GR86. It's faster in a straight line. It's faster in the corners. It's faster on track. And it's going to cost you less to run. Get the GR86. Like, it is such a good car. I have no complaints about it. Like, it's, it's fixed the fatal flaw of the 86. And... It is legitimately quick. The lap times speak for themselves. It does overheat a little bit, and a few people have blown them up, but they are a small percentage, I think. Here, here's a better uh, opinion. Don't get the GR86. Get the BRZ, because the BRZ has better rates. I don't like the front end of the BRZ. <gasps> Yeah, I prefer the look of the Toyota. Whatever, just you can get a front bumper and slap it on. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's ultimately it's the same thing, but a BRZ, like it starts, I think a thousand dollars more. It's like thirty-one versus thirty-two, but your rates on a BRZ it's significantly lower. I think it's five percent. Yeah, five percent for five years, whereas. Um, for Toyota is seven point five percent. I mean, mm. you can work out the pricing, figure out which one's better for you. But generally speaking, Subaru has better uh, better rates if you're going to be financing it or leasing it overall. But yeah, very sensible uh, opinions, not opinions, advice here from Kicking the Tires. Just as sensible as our next topic, the brand new. Honda Pilot. So there's no information on this. Um, if you go to hondanews.ca, you can see a picture of the the back end, and you can see a picture of the front end on the brand new Honda Pilot. Hmm. So it's a trail sport that they're that they're kind of pushing here. Um, from the tires, it looks better than the current trail sport tires that we get, because the current trail sport tires they look rugged on the outside, but tread is just a regular passenger tire. This looks a little bit more rugged than your the I can't remember whatever tires that they put on on the old like ones. The Firestone destinations, I think. Something like that. Yeah. Um, These look like normal passenger all terrains. Like yeah. okay, a better tire. I don't know why this really matters. Like. Realistic Who who's going to be taking this off road? I mean, they're doing the they're doing development testing though, in like some crazy places. It looks like you know in the desert they're climbing rocks and whatnot. No one in a Honda Pilot is going to be doing any of this. But I mean, the front end looks like a CRV. The back end doesn't look like anything Honda has ever made. Mm-hmm. The back end looks more like a Subaru. Kind of has that like Subaru a Forester. Yeah, ascent kind of shape yeah. to it. Um, I'm really curious if this is going to be competitive because the pilot has not been competitive for a while. And no, I mean, where last we update stand, got... the Pathfinder is more competitive. <laughs> the last update was 2016. It's been a long time since we got an update. Um, yeah. I wonder if it's still going to carry the J Series V6 in it. Oh boy, your favorite. They don't, thing is, they don't have a good like alternative power plant Hmm. right because other than the j series v6 if they like this pilot shares that platform with the mdx that's currently k turbo from like the rdx in but they didn't do that with the mdx neither Hmm. right and the mdx which is they always put out the mdx first and then they put out the pilot and the mdx is exactly the same as the pilot always has been right Mm. so unless you know in 2024 they decide to put in the uh the k-series turbo i don't know 
I mean, the, they put a Type S motor in it the from the TLX, but I highly doubt they're going to put that in the Honda Pilot. They don't need that kind of power. So yeah. maybe they they'll need put the efficiency two liter? Because people are going to compare the yeah. MPGs of the Pilot versus the Palisade, the Highlander, the yeah. Pathfinder, and those are I mean, all decent. The, the K Turbo is a good motor. They use it basically for all their all yeah. their vehicles, right? Yeah, um, it doesn't sound good, but doesn't need to. It's a pilot. Yeah. You don't want to hear it. Regardless. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully we'll get some more information. Um, I don't think they said anything other than this fall. Yeah. So we'll get more information in the fall and we'll go from there. The most exciting Chevy news. Wow. Got a biggest yawn from Justin as soon as he saw the car. Um, <laughs> this is the 2023 Tahoe RST Performance Edition. Um, I don't know if you read the blurb yet. Did you read the blurb? Mm -hmm. You did? Oh, okay. Well, Motorsports gonna... inspired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first blurb, it says, Motorsport inspired and pursuit rated performance enhancement, offering balance of accelerating performance with true SUV capability and comfort. Nice. It, it has 13 more horsepower and 7 pound-feet more torque. I mean, um, it's, it's decently quick. It's a 6.2 V8. It's, it's good power ready, but like the, the way that they're putting it, it seems like it's something crazy, right? It's something like an Escalade V, but on a Tahoe level. But no, it's no. just a small increase of power. Give me a Tahoe SS. And then, mm, yeah. That would be cool. I would buy it. No, I, I, can't, I can't afford it. Uh, <laughs> zero to 60, they claim 5.8 seconds, uh, which isn't that quick. But I mean, it's quick enough for an SUV of this size. The only thing is the Ford um, Expedition Stealth Performance was released recently, and that is like a, under five seconds, zero to 60. So if you really want a big SUV that's fast, buy an Alpina XB7. Hmm. <laughs> or, you well, know, I mean, this thing is probably, what, 80,000 bucks around there? No pricing that I saw. Yeah. No pricing. Um, but it How does is have a nice truck, though. They, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. Like the new Tahoe's are really, really nice. Um, but they did do some suspension tuning on this. It's the Pursuit Tahoe, so like the police interceptor version. Mm -hmm. So it slightly lower, 0.4 inches. Um, you get bigger brakes, red calipers. Um, you also get what else do you get? Dampers, anti roll bars as well that are upgraded. Mm. I mean, it's not a oh, is that a pricing there? 80 oh, they do have pricing, it's eight thousand five hundred and twenty five dollars above a regular RST. Whoa, that's but I don't know how much an RST is. That's, that's quite a bit because you're getting what an intake and exhaust. Sway bars breaks. That it's doesn't not bad. seem like it's eight thousand US worth of upgrades. Of upgrades to me, yeah. Hmm. But I don't know. It <laughs> maybe I, I don't really care for these kinds. Of <laughs> we're, we're not we're, the target. We're not the target demographic for it. Absolutely yeah. not. But. You know, it's kind of cool. They're doing something to kind of reimagine the uh, the Tahoe a little bit. Just as exciting. Another big yawn from Justin here. <laughs> <laughs> as we go into Stellantis news. Um, I didn't even put it in for this week, but Stellantis also released a new version of the Charger and Challenger. But mm. that we're just going to get more yawns from Justin here. Uh, but the last of the legend... So what it is, is Chrysler released a new version of the 300C. They're putting the 6.4 Hemi in it. I think they took it away from the 300C for a long time because they had it in the SRT and whatnot. But I think they took it away for a bit. But essentially, it's a 6.4 liter Hemi V8, 485 horse, 475 pound-feet of torque. You get four piston Brembo brakes, uh, LSD, active suspension, active exhaust, 2,000 for the U.S., 200 for Canada, 
MSRP, 55,000 US for a very aged Chrysler 300C, but with a big motor. I mean, Chrysler is going through the ways of getting brand new um, uh, electric cars. And yeah. they did, like most well, Stellantis anyways, announce a bunch of Jeep products that I didn't put in the, the dock this week, but I'm going to find it because that is actually more interesting than this 300C. Well, you know, the 300 is dying off, but I think they really missed an opportunity with the 300E. Like, just give me a, a electric big sedan, and you know, people will eat it up. It's a, it's got the presence, like the whole, the whole Chrysler 300 thing. Like it, they, they, they just gave up on, it. because there was a time when people were excited about 300s, and now it's just like a rental fleet, like old man type of vehicle. But there were cool versions and you know, stuff to like about it, but I haven't seen a, anyone really talk about it. Anyone under the age of 50 really look <laughs> look forward to it. But I think they're, like the, the shape and the, the, the presence of a 300 combined with electrification, there's a lot of potential there. Maybe in the future. Um, I'm having difficulties finding it. They had this concept jeep wrangler no sorry uh wagoneer s i cannot find the information for it here but it's uh maybe under concept vehicles here maybe not nope. um but it was a brand new jeep that they um are looking to debut you get this one here that i have on the right it's just like four by not four by e sorry it's a full electric like little jeep it's like wrangler type but it's not replacing the wrangler mm. it looks kind of, kind of like a defender it it's very like, cool looking yeah it's like kind of rugged boxy yeah, um, proper size tires <laughs> yeah it kind of looks like a hopped up patriot a little bit because it has yeah. kind of that proportion uh, but it's not the same size as that. It's bigger than that. I can't find it for whatever it is. Yeah, um, we'll get to it next week. <laughs> I'll be too late next week. Anyways, some cool stuff coming from Jeep. Um, the Rang Wagoneer S. It's not based on any Jeep. It's a full electric um, Jeep that is to compute against like uh, more like Grand Cherokee size vehicles, which is kind of weird. So like, because the Wagoneer was supposed to be like the posh brand of Jeep. Mm -hmm. So this is like their posh brand of the Grand Cherokee, but the Grand Cherokee is already pretty posh. So it's like, yeah. how much more higher can you get? I guess it's, you know, to kind of compete with the, like the Velar whenever that comes out. Yeah. And then they also release uh, like a Euro specific model. Like it's like the compass or the Cherokee, but it's called the Jeep Avenger. So they took the oh. Avenger name from Dodge, and they they made a full EV, uh, Euro specific model, four hundred kilometer range. It's going to be Europe, Japan, South Korea. Oh, that uh, yellow thing, right? Yeah, the yeah. yellow thing. It looks like a compass kind of size car. Uh, not sure why it's not coming here because I think a little crossover. Like like off roady looking crossover with four hundred kilometer range would do great here. Yeah, but who knows? Like, <laughs> just... we we talked about this right here. I yeah. remember seeing. We talked about this little guy before because they did. Yeah. Oh, here's the pictures. Brand four by E date. This yeah, yeah. Recon. That's called the recon. Yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah, and then recon we have... looks cool. Wagoneer S, this looks like a Velar to me, and I like that yeah, a lot. Very Velar, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the recon looks really cool. I think for people who are looking for like an electrified, like cheap experience, this is kind of like that step. You can take the doors off. Yeah, you can take the doors off of it. That's kind of cool. Mm. But that, yeah, Wagoneer S just has Velar written all over it to me. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they have a, a lot thing. of models. It's very confusing nowadays with Jeep because just size wise, like, oh, these are our compact offering. These are midsize. These are full size. And it's just, there are so many models, but Jeep has so much going on compared to the rest of Solantis. Hmm. Yeah. But speaking of the rest of Solantis. Oh, perfect segue for a Ferrari SUV. Yeah. You probably heard about it. It's the Puro Sangue. <laughs> I was going to let you do it. because <laughs> I, I, There's no way I can say whatever the hell that is. <laughs> yeah. But I like the translation from Italian to English. It's Which is what? Thoroughbred. Ah. The Ferrari Thoroughbred? It's an SUV. Doesn't make sense, does it? But, hey, you know, we're in the world of SUVs. Ferrari swore up and down that they'll never make an SUV. Yeah, um, and this is barely an SUV. <laughs> it, it's and just so, a little lifted. Yeah, it's a little lifted. It has no practicality at all, like as far as an SUV goes. The overhang is too long. The car is too low. It's got suicide doors. It's got no trunk, no usable trunk. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, there's no off road modes. Yeah. The it has only... less trunk space than like a smart car, realistically. The... It has a wet mode, and that's about it. Wet snow, I think. Uh, yeah. But, you know, who who's taking their Ferrari off-road? That doesn't matter at all. No. What you have to know is about this $400,000 Ferrari. Is, it has a V12 on the front, 715 horsepower, 528 pound-feet of torque. Um, they estimate a 0 to 100 kilometer power at 3.3 seconds and 193 mile per hour top speed. I mean, numbers, it's absolutely there. But is this a good looking Ferrari or is a GT, so GTC4, GT4? GTC4 Luso. I was like, wait, it doesn't sound right. Uh, the GTC4 Luso, is that the prettier one that you should get? I like this one, actually. Because both can carry four. I mean, it's much easier four. to. Both this can't have much trunk space. Yeah. It is easier to get into the back of this. It is. More graceful, but you will ding your neighbor's door <laughs> because your door will just fall. <laughs> the problem with clamshell doors, like I never owned an RX-8 and never really driven it for long to know. But when I had the MX-30, your your most hated electric car that's on sale, um, when you park next to someone and you want to get someone in the back seat. Oh, it's so, it's so you, terrifying. You, you can't because... You open the front door, and then you're like, "Oh, I open the back door," but then it fully opens to the yeah. well to the neighboring car, and you don't have enough room to squeeze a person yeah. in. It just doesn't work for stall parking. <laughs> like parallel parking, you're okay. Fine. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, it's not very practical for stall parking, which maybe they don't have a lot of in Italy. Uh, but I think it's a really good looking shape. I think it looks better than the Luso. The Luso has huge stretched back eyes that i don't like hmm. i think the previous like the, FF, I think the ff looks better, better. Yeah. yeah uh and this this looks kind of more like the roma which is a very pretty car uh not very ferrari looking necessarily but it yeah. is a nice looking car uh really nice proportions because they've completely compromised the practicality right it's <laughs> it's 40 percent hood right like most of the length of the car is hood uh the hood is probably three times longer than the trunk uh you know your rear headrest goes all the way up to the c pillar or the d pillar actually yeah uh, so so it's... there's there's a long ish trunk but like i said it's probably no bigger than like a versa maybe That's... like a, a versa is dead. a huge trunk yeah like but, any like Kia Rio kind of trunk, like I don't think any subcompact. I think I this is in the subcompact range. I don't think anyone that's buying a Ferrari is like, oh man, my trunk is smaller than a Kia Rio. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> the thing is, you want to take this. The idea is you want to take it, you know, grand touring. Yeah. I think you know you want to. You drive would this want a from, bigger. Yeah. Yeah, you can't I, I really anything. like this double bubble kind of instrument cluster. Oh yeah, Ferrari's been doing it for a while. They've been doing like like a cluster for the passenger. 
it's it, but it's like the way that it's designed it looks like it's exact same it's not but this will make it easier for left and right hand drive cars right you would think that it should be but the the cluster that the uh the the passenger has has full controls over the vehicle so you don't have to have a screen in the center which actually makes quite a bit of sense that knob in the center is an actual knob you press a button it raises up and you can turn it to like control temperature and stuff like that mm -hmm. it's actually pretty cool and there's the same knob in the rear as well the seats look good like they look really like comfortable and they still have that kind of italian flair to it mm -hmm. and you have a full glass roof as well so like it's just not very suv like it's, no. it's a clown shoe shape and it's very low and it's got very low profile tires yeah so that's kind of you know the urus people were like that's not really an suv the urus is a lot more truck like than this thing well the the urus is at least based on a q8 this is not <laughs> this is based off of a sporty hatchback wagon yeah. thing that is now lifted a bit higher i mean i think it's i think it's cool um, I'm sure we're going to see quite a bit of them here in Vancouver, uh, just because, you know, we're, we're the market for it. I would like to see one in person, but I mean, I don't know what I'm saying because it's not like I can afford it anyways. No. So let's move on to something that's also not affordable. <laughs> yeah, completely uh, unaffordable. Yeah. So the next vehicle that we're here to talk about is the Pagani Utopia. This is the replacement for the Wyra. I mean, the Wyra has been out for a very long time. Mm. I remember Clarkson in an episode of Top Gear, he was saying Wyra on. Wyra. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> is it a replacement or is it just like something different? Because it's, it's gone very classic, I found. It, it is very classic in its looks. Um, from what I can, like from the blurb, it says it's a replacement for it. Mm. Yeah, um, twin turbo V12, 852 horsepower, manual or single clutch auto. Um, instead of just being carbon fiber, it's carbo titanium. Carbotanium. Carbotanium. Dry weight of 2822 pounds, 2822 pounds. Quite light. Um, if you want one, too late. All 99 has been sold for about 2.5 million bucks. Better deal than the Gordon Murray. <laughs> Every single called. time, whenever we look at an expensive thing, it's why does always it have the headlights off the Smart Four Four? It, I'm, okay. And then I looked at the interior. This is I had a gripe about the interior, which is it's not very pretty. Like the touches, the fit and finish, it's a Bugatti. Okay, it's amazing. Yeah, but the look of it is like a Morgan interior. <laughs> like, it's, it's a very it's retro, very retro really ugly serif font on like the auto and like i don't know i think there's better ways to do this that it i don't know it's it's really not my cup of tea uh all right i'm gonna say something controversial i never really liked a lot of pagani's like interior design you know yeah. they just they don't to me they like it's very kind of retro and intricate but like Sure, it looks great, but like functionality. Well, I thought I just, the Zonda mm. was was nice. Like the Zonda for twenty five years ago, like I that was pretty pretty nice. I remember the Zonda had um, climate control from a Ford or something like that. That's the only thing I remember. Yeah, but this does not feel like a huge evolution from mm -hmm. the Zonda, which really was like what 98 99 when we first saw the, the zonda so we're coming up on a quarter century uh you know everyone talks about pagani oh it's it's the the most amazing detail every screw costs x amount because it's made of whatever it's a very Car exotic carbotanium car. yeah <laughs> the carbotanium but it it is not the prettiest car. Um, it's not the fastest car. But you're buying art here. It is, yeah. I think that's what it is. 
right? You're you're hundred yeah. percent buying art. Like, look at that wheel. You got mm -hmm. inset of carbon fiber as a fan blade mm -hmm. that goes around the brakes. Extractors, and then you have like a leather, yeah, watch strap holding down the holding hood. the the hood here. Like, yeah, one hundred percent. This is art. This is something that you go to cars and coffee and you show off your utopia. Yep. Right. That's really what it's about. Mm -hmm. Um. And I mean, the guy made a bunch of money selling art. Why not, right? There's tons of people that will love to stare at this. I would love to stare at it. Wouldn't want to own one, even if I had the money. I would rather have something that's a little bit more functional, let's say, like a Porsche. But once again, not the not the market for me. Mm -hmm. I don't have 2.5 million can, uh, US dollars. Yeah. Almost seems like a good value these days. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Almost. You know what is a good value, though? Our next car. Ooh. The KTM Crosspo GTXR. So the a lot, of, a lot of letters, very exciting <laughs> letters. <laughs> yeah, it has all the X's, the GTs, and an R. Yeah, all, yeah. all the exciting letters Just missing you can think an of. S. No, yeah. S downgrades it from the R. Oh, <laughs> RS. XRS. Uh, the Crossbow GTXR is the it's a row going version of the Crossbow GT2. I mean, this is going to be for the European market. They didn't say anything about bringing it to North America, but it actually looks amazing. It's like this. Really? Yeah, I was going to say, why does it look the way it looks? I, I think it looks really cool <laughs> because it looks like it's. The crossbow has always looked weird, right? Even like the first crossbow that was like, like an open canopy one, it's yeah. always looked weird and always used Audi this engines. Is a very squished face. The it's rest super of squished. it, like a pillar back, I think it looks pretty sick, but the face is just—it's not well, pretty. The know. the face to me just reminds me of like LMP cars. Yeah. I mean, it's I not know, proportionally to... they could make it look better. Like, just I'm sure they could have, but because of the canopy design, you got the fighter style cockpit, which yeah. totally just opens forward. You got this really good view on the front, so like you can just you know put that vehicle exactly on the apex, exactly what this car is about, mm -hmm. kind of. That makes <laughs> sense, visibility wise. It does make sense to squish down the front end like that, yeah. but it just it looks awkward because the 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 window like the greenhouse is so tall, and then the the lights are like down here, so it looks like it has like an underbite. Hmm. Um, but functionally, it makes sense. Yeah, it has a two and a half liter five cylinder. So oh, so it's not coming to Canada for sure because <laughs> this engine is banned. Oh, it's a banned. Isn't it? That's why the RS3 is not here. We can't get an RS3 anymore? We can't get an RS3 anymore. That or TTRS? You, you can't. Like, you what? could get it in the States. Oh, I didn't know that. You, yeah, the new body style RS3 is not available in Canada. Oh. Uh, because this engine doesn't meet emission standards. Apparently. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's so we're not upsetting. Yeah. Oh, I, I had no idea. I thought we could still just get the uh you know the weirdest thing though is the people ha who have the previous generation rs3 are like i'm holding on to this because it's going to be worth something because the engine is so exotic and like whatever it's a mass-produced engine that uh, in my opinion does not even sound that good everyone right. raves about how crazy you the did five you did sound. mention this before i really don't think it sounds that amazing oh, it's half a lambo v10 i you know what else is a half a Lambo V10? Uh, Mid two thousand Volkswagen Jetta and the Volkswagen Golf and Rabbit. Mm. Those sound those sound pretty good. I actually really like those yeah. straight pipe. Mm. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, the reason why this is more affordable, <laughs> I'm not gonna say cheap because <laughs> it isn't. It's more affordable than the Pagani is uh, two hundred and eighty six thousand US. Ooh. Kind of what it translates to. I mean, it's not bad, right? That's a lot for a motorcycle. <laughs> well, it weighs a lot for a motorcycle. Without fuel, it's 2,755 pounds. Oh. Yeah, it's one of these track specials. Um... But it's one for the road. 
It's a track. It's like a radical for the road. Yeah, you got a roof <laughs> over your head. Yeah. That's basically all they did really, <laughs> to make it yeah. friendly. But let's talk about our last car here. The car that it's probably the biggest act- story of this week. It is the biggest story released like two hours ago here um, at the time of recording anyways, is the 2024 Ford Mustang. Seventh generation of the fourth Mustang. This is a reimagined, revised, updated version of the Mustang. It shares the same chassis and the windows as the, and the roof. Yeah. Oh, 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 of the uh, <laughs> of the previous generation Mustang, but from the rear three quarters, as we talked before um, recording today, does have some Camaro vibes. Yeah. That rear three quarters does does look kind of Camaro y. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's the Even tail the lights back. and the deck lid. Yeah, the whole from yeah b pillar back it is very camaro yeah it's uh, it's the rear haunch it's over that rear rear um yeah the proportions wheel. are i think the, the coupe probably looks more camaro the coupe yeah. definitely looks more camaro than the uh than a convertible but you totally see it it definitely has some of that camaro vibes i think it's still a good looking vehicle it i is. mean it is I think the, well. Someone messaged me before the show. They're like, "What do you think about the new Mustang?" And I'm like, "It is very much what I would expect the new Mustang to look." Yeah. Like. The front end, I would say, I like the new one more, but the back, I think, I would like the current generation more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the wheels look small in it, like the from the rear angle and even this angle. Uh, I don't know. They they cut out the cutout on the fender is is a little bit smaller. I don't proportionally it's not as pretty as the outgoing one, I would say. And it doesn't sound like they've like re-engineered the car very much either. No. Uh, I mean I still like it. I, I I would still definitely consider getting it. Like I've been thinking about the Mustang for a while now. I feel like I need to check that off my list of cars so please do uh, so I can drive one. Yeah. Like I drove the <laughs> the when the S550 the outgoing generation now first came out. I drove the GT uh the yellow one they had on press and I thought I think that was my first real like muscle car experience and I thought that one did not drive great. Mm. Um it was just like the front end gets really light. Uh, but then after my Camaro, I kind of re reconsidered muscle cars. Um, I just remember that Camaro. I remember it was winter and you shoved me into the back seat of it. Hmm. And we're driving around near Costco and Burnaby. And yes. there was very limited traction because it was cold on summer tires. But it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and I think the Mustang now in its fourth generation of the Coyote V8. Coyote V8, pretty solid engine, actually, even since Mm -hmm. day one. The transmission has always been the issue, but uh, that's kind of sorted out now. But the engine's been pretty solid. Uh, Good, reliable power, it seems. It's the same engine that's in your truck, isn't it? But mine is like second generation of the engine, right? It's been revised quite a bit. Yeah. So, and mine makes maybe 370 horse. And now they're saying close to 500. Close to 500. There's no uh, official power numbers. No, out no yet. power so figures yet. Figures. They say it's more than the outgoing yeah, one. I mean, the outgoing one, I think the highest output we saw was maybe 470. Uh, and so 500 is realistic. And, you know, we were talking about this the other day when you stopped by. It's like, hey, a Mustang GT for say 40 grand to start that's a yeah. lot of car for the money it really is like it's you can't complain about that interior for 40 grand no it's and it's it's not a bad interior you really can't isn't. complain about the sound you it's it's just you get so much for your money and yeah. uh, i yeah. mean yeah because the base 
EcoBoost is like 33. You can get a GT. What, low 40s maybe? Uh, building it, it is base GT is 46 with no options on it. 46 with uh with uh fees. Yeah. So like I feel like you need to get the premium though because the base one is really cheap. But that might be irrelevant with the new one. They haven't really talked about too much with the specs. Uh so new one we know that it's just a four four cylinder turbo which is a supposedly an all new engine. I don't know how true that is cuz Ford Well they say this is an all new Mustang as well. Yeah. And we know it's not an all new Mustang. Exactly. <laughs> and well, with that, with the with the Coyote, they're like, this is the fourth generation. But with the EcoBoost, they're like, this is an all new EcoBoost four cylinder motor, yeah. which EcoBoost is really not bad either. No. Um, 300 horse. Yeah. But the interior is very different. I think the exterior is very predictable. Like, we, we kind of saw, okay, they're going to smooth out some of the lines. It just <laughs> looks more futuristic because they're going to eventually internal combustion engines are going to get phased out. And eventually the regular Mustang is also going to be like the mach and it's going to have uh, an electric power plant of some sort. But the interior is very different because from as long as I can remember, the Mustang has had this kind of like double bubble cockpit thing mm -hmm. going on and they've switched it to like a driver oriented cockpit yeah it's even canted right. in the middle towards the driver yeah the screen is is angled towards the driver and then they've got this uh they've kept the volume knob because they said they surveyed people people want a volume knob so there is still a volume knob uh it's not all screen like the maki um you still get a volume knob in the maki it's just on the screen part of the screen yeah <laughs> yeah but it, it's got like physical clicky buttons, uh, a start button. And the way it's angled, it really, really reminds me of the R35, the GTR. Mm. Um, you know, kind of baby version of that. But yeah, like to me, you can get it with the Recaro optional seats, which are just like the GTRs. <laughs> and they look great. So it's, yeah, like it looks straight out of a GTR, that the seat. Yeah. yeah. It really does. <laughs> yeah. White two-tone interior. So the back seat is looks like it's all black. Um, but yeah, it looks very different interior-wise than the outgoing car, at least with the center stack, right? Like the door card looks very similar. The the cup holder looks very similar. Um yeah. The whole center maybe, console is basically carryover. Yeah, a little bit of elements from the Camaro, a little bit of elements from the <laughs> GTR. Right. Yeah, they did move the vents lower, like the Camaro. But yeah, unlike which, the Camaro, you don't control the the temperature with the vents. Yeah, at least they're <laughs> halfway up. The the Camaro with the vents down low really doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, I think right. The Camaro had the vents. Yeah, no, it's it's all the, the way down. Bottom. It's like right in front of the shifter. Yeah, I had a Camaro. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that being one of the weird things about that car. One of the many weird things about it. it had ergonomically. Same, it had the same vents as a Blazer. Mm. That's what you have to remember. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so yeah it's, what's... it's definitely a, a very different dash. You get these wide screens on here. Um, the cluster is a 12.4 inch. The, cluster, the infotainment is a 13.2. So the, it is a very, very large screen that's in the center. The inside is kind of cool and all. The, the best feature I saw within the blurb is none of those. It's this remote rev mm. that they have talked about. And what it is, is essentially you can remote start your car from your key fob, which a lot of vehicles can do. Mm. But this is the first vehicle I've ever heard of that you can rev your engine from your fob. So you have to get an automatic to do that, I assume. You would think so, because generally speaking, any manual you transmission you can't get remote starts on, other than like if you do aftermarket like CompuStar. But even technically for CompuStar, you're not supposed to put it on. Yeah, you uh, need to put it in a res reservation mode and all. Yeah, that. 
it's there's a whole bunch of things that go with it because you don't want the car to be in gear and to like you start it and just exactly well, now you can rev it <laughs> in gear. <But> now, <laughs> could you imagine but i'm, I'm sure it's going to be a an automatic one but anyways automatic rev through a key fob how how awesome is that the ability to rev your car through a key fob mm -hmm. it, like, it's it kind of makes sense it's like it's already started and you can, i don't know how loud it goes i need to see this in action but for the type of people that want to buy a mustang i think it makes sense yeah especially people that buy automatic mustangs <laughs> You know, because it's it's such a it's such a statement that you're making when you get one of these. I feel like. Um, no. Let's talk about the, uh, the not performance wrong. pack. Hmm. A little bit. So performance pack similar to previous Mustang S197, S550. Uh, you're getting a strut bar, oil cooler, a little bit. Not not that much, but you're getting Brembo brakes. Uh, really, really depends how the pricing is with this car, but uh, pretty cool. Uh, Torsen LSD, because I know LSD was always standard, but I guess it wasn't a Torsen LSD on on the base model. Uh, getting more aggressive rear tires, and it's it's got the weird Mustang thing, which is the weird like minimal stagger like the rear is half an inch wider than the front it's it's very negligible oh, and it's a torsen for the gt package on the 2022 as well it's already torsen to be yeah 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 so the the performance pack i i don't know oh sorry no i'm looking at the gt performance pack and you get a torsen ah, diff okay but yeah 390 mil brakes pretty pretty sizable brake but it's a heavy car so if you are tracking it, uh, makes sense go to for get the it. performance pack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the coolest thing, coolest thing, is the performance EPB electronic the... parking brake. <laughs> so where your handbrake would normally be, it has this lever that looks like uh, a handbrake, and it is. It's an electronic handbrake. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read from the blurb because I love this quote. It can quickly turn a novice into drifting pro like Von Gittin Jr. Yeah, step aside, Von Gittin Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a Mustang with the knob on it or a lever on it, and now yeah. I can drift like you. Mm -hmm. oh, the Mustang blurbs, why, why do they say the things they do? I mean, at least it doesn't say can run over. Someone more is definitely going to wrap it around the tree, though. Like, <laughs> oh, this button is going to put so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's they did a the drift e brake for the uh, the Focus RS, mm -hmm. right? And that was like really cool. Kind of makes sense, you know, all yeah. blue driving and pull it right. Mm -hmm. Was that for Von? No, that was a uh, for that was Ken Block, I think, right? back then when they did the focus rs i think it was ken block it was before he moved to audi but just on a mustang on a rear wheel drive vehicle like this locking up that rear i mean i don't know if it because it is electronic it might be smarter right it can maybe do something that you know if it senses that you're the uh, like the angle is too much. Maybe it can automatically deactivate. Maybe it's smart enough to do that. I don't know. There's no information on that, but just having a, a, an electronic handbrake for you to drift. I think Mustangs already get into enough trouble. The Mustang is inherently dangerous. Just the, the type of people that buy it, <laughs> the look of the car and just the track record it's had is, is not great for pedestrian or road safety <laughs> it's yeah like probably not a cheap car to insure if you get my drift <laughs> a drift <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah the it seems irresponsible but yeah you're getting it i think what do all the gts get it or only if you get the handling pack wasn't i it? don't recall it. i don't um, recall 
Yeah, but it's pretty cool. I I definitely am considering a Mustang, but not at this very moment. I think in the near future, I would definitely want to try the whole Mustang ownership and tracking a Mustang because they're they're pretty competitive cars out there. Yeah, because well, I mean inherently you put big tires on anything. The fact that you can fit like a 305 front tire, that just makes the car very capable. Yeah. Uh, but we also have the Dark Horse Edition Mustang. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's like a kind of a special um, higher performance model based off of the GT. So what they said about the Dark Horse is they wanted to surprise you with a special edition right out of the gate. Because generally like Bullet and other models, it's later on. But that's why they wanted to name this one Dark Horse. Like a surprise. Here's a special edition right out of the gate. It's a more track focused version. Um, as Justin said, it is powered with the V8, targeting 500 horsepower. You can get it with the six or the 10 speed auto. There's special transmission coolers, NACA ducks. Like it's track orientated. It's going to be kind of cooler. The best part about it carbon fiber wheels with Pirelli P0. PZ4s? I thought I read something that was Trafails. Oh, PZ4 is a standard. PZ4 is a street tire. Trafail mm. is if you get the optional. There is a handling package. Even though this is a performance model already, the Dark Horse, there is an additional performance package on top of it. It's kind of mm. like SS1LE or ZL1LE. Oh, okay. On top of it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this sense. is like the track special package. So the track special handling package gets wider wheels, wider tires, Trofeo RS, which really shouldn't street on because uh, they have no cold grip. And if it rains, you're screwed. Uh, gurney flaps, different springs, larger sway bars. Uh, so handling package, pretty cool, but it is definitely a track specific model. Uh, I, I know a guy that used Trofeo R's on his Porsche on a on a autocross in the wet. Hmm. He did not did have he fun. He said oh. it's he survived. He told oh. me it was not fun because there was no grip. Yeah. So <laughs> compared to the regular GT performance package, you're getting standard uh Magna Ride, which is kind of nice because they make you pay extra for that on the on the even if you get the performance pack with the Mustang. Um but yeah, a little bit better aerodynamics, but it's kind of a new model, like a, a Dark Horse. I don't know how I feel about that name. Um I mean and then there's a, a different logo on the fender. It's yeah like it's a, a it's a special dark horse yeah. um emblem. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Dark horse. Yeah. I mean, I'm this, really waiting to see the GT models, like the GT 350, GT 500. Mm, the Shelby if ones. If they're going to do that. I don't know if they're going to do that. I mean, this they is don't like... don't really the, need to. Well, the thing is, this is the last hurrah for them, right? This is supposedly the last actual probably gasoline last gas. Mustang. Yeah. yeah internal so, combustion only Mustang. They're, they have to do something special as a send-off. They have to. Mm-hmm. It's Ford. They're not going to just leave it. I don't know if you watch a live stream of of this Mustang kind of like being delivered, but like the crowd was going wild over it just because of the vehicle that it is. Yeah. The fact that they're still doing it, right. It's not, yeah. people were probably worried like, Oh no, the Maki, that's, that's not how this car is going to go out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? I'm sure a lot of people ex- like felt exactly that way. Yeah. I would say the dark horse looks a lot better. Like it just, it's so aggressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does I, have a different front and rear bumper and, bunch of other stuff as well yeah it does have gt350 vibes like yeah relative to the previous generation mach 1 yeah. gt350 kind of thing yeah mm-hmm. absolutely that's the one I mean, to get i well you say that's the one to get i i wouldn't mind an eco boost with a performance pack to be very honest Nah, you always like it'll you, always be in the back of your mind. Like, ah, I should 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 have got a V eight. Yeah, no, absolutely. People but will like, make excuses. Oh, it's sixty pounds lighter on the front axle. Yeah, like so much better turn in. Yeah, they, they will say <laughs> stuff like that. But realistically, they're 
it's, it's like not. I just and your couldn't... lap times will not be <laughs> it's just realistically I, I I couldn't get the financing for the uh for the GT had to settle for the EcoBoost. Mm. <laughs> At one point I considered getting the V6. Oh god. This is like this is a decade ago when I first oh, okay. started working. Uh and the V6 because back then this is like 2011 and I had like I'm like okay I'm going to save money and get myself Mustang any Mustang cuz that's I really wanted one. And yeah, this is like 2011 and prior to that the GT only made like 300 horse, 305. And then they came out with the 3.7 V6 with the variable cam timing, whatever. And that made 300 horse. I'm like, damn, that, that is so fast. It's, it's as much power as a, as a Nissan Z. Uh, but, you know, at that time, it seemed like a decent performance. No, at, at that time, the Mustang you should have bought was the SN95. But keep in mind, the V6 Mustang at that time was $26,000 to start and already had a lot of features, uh, you know, for 2011 standard. So at one point, like I get, I get the entry level car, like at 35 grand, it is so much car for your money. I'm not going to talk anyone out of it, but, but for me, I think. It will just drive me nuts. Like I will always want at least the GT. Yeah, I mean, if it makes more sense to get the GT, a base GT, than get an option filled EcoBoost. Oh yeah, because you can get a lot of that stuff aftermarket. Like everything is bolt on, really. Like it, yeah, the it, engine you really can't bolt on. That's the thing, right? Mm-hmm. But if you want to get like the better brakes, you can get that aftermarket. It's not going to be as you know, as cheap as maybe getting it from Ford. If you want better wheels, tires, um, suspension, like you can get that all aftermarket. So you're mm-hmm. buying a base V8. You can do whatever you want to it. And get yeah, a better it's a car. Good, it's a good platform to build off of. Yeah. Yes, there will be people that build up the EcoBoost and tune it, put a downpipe intercooler on it. And hey, it's making the same power as a GT. I don't doubt it, but it won't sound like a GT. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm, the, that 2.3 actually sounds decent, though. I, I've heard one with it an does. exhaust. It, it, it sounds pretty good. It's it's yeah. not GT good, but it's pretty good. But you cannot flex on an IS500 <laughs> with the EcoBoost. You, you actually can, because the IS500 is very weak. It's true. As we have discovered. The EcoBoost is probably faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at least when that guy goes, oh, look at my V8, it sounds so good. <laughs> and you're like, that's, okay. that's not a V8. That's not a real V8. <laughs> yeah. And he like, that sounds like a U-Haul, like a Chevy Astro or whatever, Savannah mm. V8. Those LS V8s, are, those are good too. Or LTs. Yeah. But not in those vans. They, they don't have <laughs> Yeah. Just just cut the muffler off. It'll be fine. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's really it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next week. Hopefully we get some exciting stuff. If not, we'll uh, skip a week like we did last week. Yeah. Catch you on the flippity flip. It's flippity flop, actually. <laughs> <laughs>